Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my weekly wrap-up of March 13th, 2016, wherein I tell you briefly about what I read this past week because one, I'm fighting off a sinus headache, two, my dog keeps interrupting me, and three, I did not have a super successful reading week just in pure enjoyment levels. The first thing that I read this week was The Snow Queen by Joan D. Vinge. This is a hard science fiction novel from 1980 about an ageless, corrupt snow queen trying to prolong her reign on the planet of Tiamat. There is a lot more to this story than just that, including a clone of the snow queen, a girl named Moon, and her cousin and lover Sparks, and adventures off planet as well, but I'm not gonna get into all of that. This book has been compared a lot to Dune by Frank Herbert, and I now understand why a lot of the plot elements and stuff going on reminded me a lot of Dune, which was both good and bad. I guess. I think the story was too slow and too long. The plot itself implies action and adventure, but it really lacked a sense of urgency, and while it is supposed to be on a very grand scale, on a very interstellar scale, it did not feel epic scale at all. I chalk most of this up to the length of the book and not anything to do with characterization or the writing itself. It was a very well put together book and the story was interesting. It just could have been a little bit less wordy. Then I read All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders, and if you follow me on Goodreads you may be expecting a super rant here. I'm not gonna go into that. I hated this book. I utterly despise this book. It is very rare for me to give out a one-star review. You know me, even if I don't like something, I usually try to say at least one good thing about it because I want to be fair and I want to recognize that a lot of books aren't bad. They're just not to my taste. But I hated All the Birds in the Sky. Perhaps irrationally, perhaps without justification or real evidence, but I didn't like this book at all. I can think of nothing good to say about it, and if you want to know more details, I have written a review of this on Goodreads. It may be the funniest thing I've ever written on Goodreads. Uh, my dad tried to read it out loud and he was laughing so hard that he had to stop. Um, so I guess it's entertaining if you want to read that, but I am done with this book and I hope that all of you people enjoy it a lot better than I did because I did not like this book. Then I read something much more enjoyable, which was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I was gonna read this along with the BookTube SFF uh, Awards group, and I just picked it up one night and read the entire 600-page book in about four hours with no break. So it certainly sucked me in. <laughs> First, some cons. The romance storyline was a lot heavier and more present and influential in the story than I expected it to be. For some reason, I thought that I had heard that the romance was kind of second to the rest of the story, but in fact it was a huge motivator in like the last third of the book, and I didn't care for that so much. It's not bad, it's completely typical of YA books, so while I thought it was a bit stereotypical and cliche, it wasn't like a terrible thing by any means. I also found Aiden's, the AI's um, passages near the end of the book to be a bit tedious. I thought that uh, some of the things that Aiden said, the way he was talking about humans as meat and literally calling them insects, was also really cliche, like evil villain dialogue. It was kind of laughable. This leads me to some positive things about this book, which is that it is a YA science fiction novel that is not a dystopia. It's not a Hunger Games knockoff by any means, and I really, really appreciated that. So I really like that. In fact, the story itself reminded me so much of Battlestar Galactica. I call this baby BSG on Goodreads because that's kind of the plot. A falling apart ship full of survivors running away from another ship that wants to kill them. The only thing it lacks is the religious mysticism and the really crappy ending. So that's good. <laughs> and as everybody has been saying, the formatting of this book is really interesting and it makes the book incredibly easy to read. There are a lot of illustrations and cool typography and all of those things which made this so fast to read. I mean, I think it's a 300 page book in 600 pages. All in all, it was a very enjoyable read. I mean, the fact that I read the entire thing in one sitting without taking any breaks should tell you something about how much I enjoyed it. Though I did not think it was amazing, I didn't think it was a five-star book, 
It was well worth reading. Then I read The Unpleasantness at the Bologna Club by Dorothy L. Sayers, which is a Lord Peter Whimsey mystery, and not my favorite of the Lord Peter stories. I didn't think that the mystery itself was very interesting. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, but really I read this story for the characters more than for the intricacies of the mysteries themselves. The bare bones of the story is that Lord Peter is present when a member of his club is found dead. He's a very elderly gentleman, and it's not super surprising that he's dead, but it turns out that the time of his death is very, very important because if he died before or after his sister on that morning, it could really change who inherits his sister's big fortune. It's a lot of people wandering around trying to find out when somebody died. That's okay. Like I said, I really enjoy the characters and kind of how these stories are character studies. I love Lord Peter as the detective and I've always liked seeing him interact with other people, so... It was just enjoyable for that. The final thing I read, a wonderful thing to cap my week off, is Jagannat by Karen Tidbeck. This is her only story collection in English, and I loved it. I have read a couple of Tidbeck stories in short fiction magazines in the past couple of months and quite enjoyed them, so I was happy when I finally got this from Interlibrary Loan. It is extremely short. It's like 130 pages of stories, and all of the stories are very brief as well and I liked every single one of them. I think that Tidbeck is considered part of like the, the Finnish weird movement or the new weird movement that Jeff Vandermeer is a part of, and I kind of like some of those things, and this Swedish version hit the spot. I wouldn't usually say that I like stories with a lot of dark elements or dark humor or just weird things going on, but this I can't believe this works so well for me. I got to the end of this and I was just surprised at how overwhelmingly positive I felt about this. So go Tidbeck. I really need to read more like Scandinavian fiction, I guess. Tidbeck is Swedish. I'm really sad that Tidbeck doesn't have more stuff in English for me to read. I think she primarily writes in English now, but a bunch of these stories are from earlier in her career and they were originally written in Swedish and then she translated them or somebody else translated them into English. And it was just so interesting to read. I just started At the Mouth of the River of Bees, which is a short story collection by Kaij Johnson, and I'm already really enjoying this. This is an interesting follow-up from Jagannath, because while well, I think that Johnson is a very different writer, some of the surreal fantasy aspects of the story so far are just really hitting the mood that Jagannath left me in. I've just barely begun on Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which I'm reading for the Booktube SFF Awards, and I am still working on my buddy read of Pandora Star by Peter F. Hamilton. I want to read this book so badly, but I couldn't concentrate on it, so this is what I need to spend my time reading this next week if my brain cooperates. That is it for me. I hope you guys had a much better reading week than I did, and if you really loved All the Birds in the Sky, I'm sorry if I upset you. Sometimes we are allowed to not like something. So thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.